Dude, I'm working on a riff, and I think it has some some of your playing style. Can I show you and you give some tips about it? Sure. Okay, so uh, the riff is kind of like this. I, I, I can't play it up to speed, but I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> Try again. Okay. Chords. Chords. Yeah, man, I, 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 I like your changes. So um, before I say what I'm thinking, what, what is your question? Um, or are you looking for, are you looking for input in general or was there something specific? You let me know. Okay. So, uh, uh my, my thinking was like, uh, there's some chord changes behind what I'm doing. Basically, Absolutely. I'm working with pent pentatonics, yep. uh, pentatonic shapes and, and some chord changes. So I started with like. Uh, F sharp minor, then I go to E major, uh, D major seventh, mm -hmm. and then C sharp seventh. Mm -hmm. And 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 I, I thought, well, I have the score changes, so basically I can play pentatonic, F sharp minor pentatonic over those stuff. Yep. Uh, so you like. Uh, uh, my thinking is, 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 is it too repetitive to like you, when you hear it, you, you know what's coming up after, yeah, so, or you think like, no, it's so just a sick is, riff. This is the thing about a classic chord progression like that. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily see it as repetitive. I mean, these types of things are, you know, stylistically, it's a, it's sort of a, you know, are you familiar with the term like a trope? Like a trope would be like a, like a, it's a, it's sort of a nicer way of saying a, a cliche. And there's nothing wrong with the cliche. You know, this, this type of chord progression. This, this kind of thing is, is, is totally acceptable, you know? Um, I, I, I think that what you're doing um, can be explored mm -hmm. in a number of ways, right? So, you know, if you're writing dual guitar music, certainly you could have one line is, is playing this and then, you know, perhaps the other guitar is outlining, you know, the chord progression in a way that, you know, sort of like I just kind of showed you there. You could also be more selective in your rhythm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right and do that kind of thing totally acceptable right um another thing that you could do is you could use a textural tone double it with a synth and then have other guitars doing various things you know what i mean so cool it can, it can be interesting i think it's just what it's, it's it's what you do with the surroundings right um you know this these types of lines, like the way you're playing it, which is basically just like, you know, essentially an arpeggio, so to speak, you are taking a pentatonic approach, which is totally fine. I think when you use something neutrally harmonic, like pentatonic, you use, you, mm -hmm. you give yourself the opportunity to do something perhaps a little more expensive with the chords. If you, mm -hmm. if it was the other way around, for example, if there was something really exotic happening in the lead, you might do something more sparse with the chord. You, you, so, you, you know, you can only give and take so much, right? If everything is really expensive, then the song is is unaffordable, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You start you, you run out of uh, room for information. You know what I mean? The cool thing about it's like if the song is too complex, I think that it's it's hard to to taste no, it. But if it's too simple, absolutely. And and look, like a riff like that is totally welcome in, as a moment for like a bit of a you know um, you could set something up that could be a very a very easy way to you know sort of bring the listener in on a simple part establish the chords and then start to explore it and take sorry about that um so yeah there's a there's a, there's a there's a number of ways to do things um you know you could also so you're an f sharp minor yeah 
where you could use these types of voicing. Uh, cool. Right? And you could take liberties with those rhythms and then everything that you play on top of it is going to sound, you know, really, uh, really welcome. Uh, not everything has to be flashy uh -huh. all the time, right? So just think about what you're doing, um, you know, with, with, with the surrounding things. Another thing to do would be to establish a really solid drum groove and then be extremely selective with what the bass is doing underneath and really just highlight, you know, particular accents on the kick drum and all those kind of things like I'm doing with the chords, right? So here I'm in drop D and in fact, it's funny because you, you know you're playing in standard i personally i love f sharp in drop d because you get that you can really hang out on d lydian yeah sure. and you get these voicings where you can play a power chord with the third up top uh-huh This kind of thing, right? So I could just picture any of that happening under what you're playing and it would be gold. Aaron, man, man thanks so much. You, you gave me so, such great tips, dude. And I wasn't expecting it. It's all good. Not a problem, man. Keep working on that and, uh, and record it and explore it. Cool. I'll do that surely, man. Somebody thanks said, for having me here. This is kind of funny. Somebody said plenty chords. Those are not plenty chords. Those are like early 2000s screamo chords. People have been doing that for a long time, just so you're aware. It's not, those are, yeah, okay. Just a little history lesson for, for whoever said that. Um, hope that's helpful. And uh, maybe we'll see you at another show, hopefully soon. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, for sure, man. Take care, buddy.